Welcome to Alba Almodovar, an introduction to loving the films of Pedro Almodovar. I'm Ingo Kang, a critic at the Washington Post, and with me is my co-host Daniel Schrader, a podcast producer at Slate. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Ingo. Happy to be back. We've got two exciting returns for you in this episode. Danny was not one of them. The first Never. is, of course, the new installment of this podcast in which we will discuss Almodovar's latest film, the, no pun intended, long just stated, Parallel Mothers. Okay, a pun had to have been intended. Like, you you, lo- <laughs> you wrote that specifically to use that word. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> The second is our guest, June Thomas, a senior managing producer of podcasts at Slate, who was last here to discuss Time Me Up, Time Me Down with us. Hi, June. Hey, Ingu. Hey, Daniel. I still can't handle that my little brother liked Time Me Up, Time Me Down more than All About My Mother. I just... I mean... Absolutely. That's his taste. Exactly. I see bad taste runs in your family. (laughs) (laughs) I do not claim his. (laughs) Fair enough. Anyway. Longtime listeners may remember that a poster for Parallel Mothers, a film that had not existed then, appeared in Almodovar's 2009 film, Broken Embraces. That's right. Classic. (laughs) The filmmaker has actually been working on the screenplay even longer since the early 2000s. The starting point of the film was, I will admit, a little lifetimey. It's a story about two women who give birth on the same day and presumably whatever could go wrong from there. Hey, if In the Cut is Jane Campion's Lifetime movie, then maybe this is Almodovar. I still don't love that descriptor. I know. Nobody does but me. (laughs) Parallel Mothers is also notable for being the first of Almodovar's films to directly tackle Spain's dictatorship era which lasted from 1939, when conservative forces won the three years civil war, until 1975, with the death of General Francisco Franco. As we've discussed several times in this podcast, Almodovar's work, especially his early transgressive films, has often been seen as a pillar of La Movida Madrileña, the liberalization of the culture, mostly in Madrid, after Franco's death and the democratization of the country. For most of his career and in most of his films, Almodovar's tack has been to ignore the dictatorship period, to thumb his nose at Franco by willing him out of existence, at least in the worlds that Almodovar has created. But with Parallel Mothers, Almodovar incorporates into a storyline the ongoing fight in Spain to excavate the mass unmarked graves left behind by the dictatorship, which disappeared somewhere between 50,000 and 200,000 dissidents. The great-grandfather of Parallel Mother star Penelope Cruz was one of these disappeared victims, and her grandmother didn't talk about her father until the end of her life, such was the severity of political repression under Franco. As one character says in the film, in, I believe, a reflection of Almodovar's own convictions, the war can't end unless the dead are buried. Unsurprisingly, Almodovar's approach here is not only partisan or political, but also familial. So Daniel, what happens in Parallel Mothers? And if you're new to the podcast, I just want to say there will be spoilers if so, that's your warning. Yep. The film opens on Janice, played by Penelope Cruz, at a photo shoot photographing Arturo, played by Israel Elahalde, a forensic anthropologist. You know, I wonder if Almodovar ever watched Bones. Um, <laughs> they have an exposition conversation about Janice's desire to exhume an unmarked mass grave outside her hometown to provide closure for all the women whose husbands and fathers were killed and buried there including her own great-grandfather, who was a photographer that took photos of many of the other victims in their town. Arturo says he will try and help, and they begin a steamy affair. Cut to a hospital. Pedro loves a hospital. (laughs) Pregnant Janice is sharing a room with teenage Anna, played by Milena Smith, who is also pregnant. They have their babies on the same day, exchange contact info, and go their separate ways. Anna with her daughter Anita, and Janice with Cecilia. Arturo thinks the baby looks nothing like him and couldn't be his. And although she's offended, Janice does a DNA test and discovers she isn't Cecilia's mother. Gasp! 
The <laughs> hospital must have swapped the babies. Who could have seen that coming? She considers <laughs> reaching out to Anna, to Anna, but by now has grown too attached to Cecilia to imagine parting with her. A while later, Janice runs into Anna, who is now working at a coffee shop and finds out that Anna's baby Anita died from sudden infant death syndrome and that she has left the house of her absent actress mother to go out on her own. Janice offers her a job as Cecilia's nanny and Anna moves in. Janice runs a DNA test without Anna's knowledge and confirms her suspicions that Cecilia is Anna's baby. Janice and Anna start a sexual relationship until one night Janice cannot handle it anymore and reveals the truth to Anna. Anna takes Cecilia and leaves the apartment while Janice is in tears. The next day, Anna calls Janice to mend things and they start sharing the role of Cecilia's mother. In the meantime, Arturo comes back in the picture because guess what? He secured funding to exhume the grave. Remember that storyline? <laughs> Janice, Anna, Cecilia, and Elena, Janice's best friend, played by the wonderful Rossi de Palma, travel back to the Pueblo with Arturo to collect biological information to help match the bodies in the graves to the missing men. The film ends as the women of the Pueblo walk to the grave together and look as look on as it's exhumed. So, um, I hate I sort of hate that, like, as a big Almodovar fan, June, we have brought you in to discuss, I believe, <laughs> two films that you don't really care for. <laughs> um, do you not care for Parallel Mothers? I think that's something I forgot to mention in our intro, uh, is that it is a very critically lauded film. I've seen it in endless top 10 lists. By whom? And by film no, critics. No, I mean, I know, I just, like... And I have to say, like, I don't quite agree. No, I, I, I'm with you too. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I'm glad that I got to watch it a second time because I did get more out of it. I did see some, you know, a few more parallels. He's a little heavy <laughs> on the parallelism. Mm. Uh, and I, it just kind of, the first watch, I was a little bit shocked, honestly, and and just like, what are we really? This is it? Like, there were, I was just kind of shocked by the sort of basicness of it. It's really yeah. his basic bitch movie, I think. <laughs> uh, You're so I right. don't know, Julieta exists. Oh, I mean, but <laughs> but there were, there were some, uh, and I'm so excited. See, but so yes. But I thought Penelope Cruz's performance was just spectacular. Uh, and having seen it again, I, I remain strong in that conviction. But yeah, uh, it's funny. You just mentioned I'm so excited. And I think that to me is the appropriate parallel because that movie wow. was was also uh, political. It was, his politi- it was his first really political movie. I do actually want to disagree with you slightly because I do think that although he's never done, I think he's the only contemporary great Spanish director who's never done a civil war movie um, because it for a while there it was all that Spanish directors were making movies about uh, he never did that but he would always have these old women you know the 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 widows in black in the pueblo and their lives were very different you know it was such a, always such a severe contrast uh, with the you know the contemporary people the 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 main the protagonist urban. of the movie yeah and it was urban. always mostly only women yeah, exactly. And, and you know, again, when you just mentioned then that it's women, at, yeah, all the women, they're just, um, they were there, the Civil War was there, but it was, it was not explicit. And that's always better with Almodovar. It's always better if things are not explicit. Uh, because like, as soon as I heard, you know, President Rajoy's name being mentioned early in the film, like, oh, shit. Um, because it, he is, for me, the greatest filmmaker, but when he gets you know when he gets political it just he loses his sense of humor and that is his greatest gift in even in movies that have been very serious you know talk to her it's a pretty serious film and yet there are jokes in that but i have to say even in that film when it fails it's around when they get too political like there's that thing about priests and nuns and priests raping nuns and that's when the movie gets really bogged down so I'm kind of going on, but just to say, yes, I agree. It's it's very much second tier Almodovar. There are some things that are just silly about it, but yeah, I think your point about the like overt politicalness is such a clear problem with this film. Um, it feels so didactic, yes, and like I, it just felt like a thing that Almodovar was like, ah, we need to talk about this. 
but I don't know how to talk about it, but we need to talk about this. So here's this scene where I'm just going to do all the exposition about like why this is important as if it's like the scroll at the beginning of a Star Wars film. <laughs> and like, it just really didn't make me care. And I feel bad because like, this is a real human tragedy that like deserves ex- literal exhumation, but like mm-hmm. he didn't make me care about it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's that scene um, where, you know, Janice has her big confrontation with Anna and, and you know, Anna's being all doe-eyed and like, I'll do whatever you like. I'll care about this if you tell me to. And it's just like, no, this is not, this is super serious. This is really important. Your generation needs to know. Don't Why don't you know anything about oh. this? Kids these and, days. Yeah, kids these days, exactly. And, you know, again, Almodovar is now, what, 72? So he's going mm-hmm. to be 72 this year. Like, uh, it, that feels like, okay. I've heard of the word proxy before, uh, but now I'm seeing it in action. Uh, <laughs> well, and I think yeah. that that would like that conversation would have been more like effective if we had understood more, or if it had been made more clear, like how it seems like Anna's family is actually much more the right wing style of family than like Penelope Cruz seems to be, and that like isn't. I don't think telegraphed strongly enough. Like on the second watch, I finally got it. But like the first time through, especially because I also didn't know enough about Spanish history. Like I did not understand this film in the way that it's meant to be understood. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think a failing of the film. I have a question for June as someone Mm -hmm. who has lived in Spain. Um, Mm -hmm. Am I understanding having a general sense that Granada where Ana's father is from is like a more conservative region than Madrid? Yeah, more conservative, but also that part of the country tends to be poorer. So Mm -hmm. the fact that they are rich in a poor part of the country uh, is, you know, is significant. And then there's the scene, which actually is one of the few funny scenes, but it's kind of funny with inverted commas, um, when... Uh, C- sorry, not when Cecilia talks. When Janice talks with Anna's mother, Anna's mother comes over to the apartment when she when she she's on tour, but she she comes back to to Madrid and she she's looking for Anna and she finds she's living with 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 Janice and you know she goes to have a t- what's going on and they have a kind of ladies of a certain age conversation and uh, Teresa says um, you know. The, the other the other actors don't respect me because I'm pija, you know, and and all actors are left wingers, and pija, you know, is is means posh, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, you know again is such a European concept that I think you she's know, like it's I just want to be... please everybody. Yeah, and uh, that character is really interesting to me because my understanding is that Teresa and Arturo are both played by stage actors. Um, mm. You know, neither of them is all that. It doesn't you know they're not familiar faces to me I don't think they've done a ton of, of screen work but um they've Teresa especially gets the full Almodovar treatment you know she's she's an actress she gets to do a monologue she gets to a Lorca monologue yeah exactly exactly um and she's you know a bad mother which is the, the a know, bad the mother who's an actress which is also an interesting yeah. like wrinkle in this that she's doing a Lorca monologue and Lorca was one of the people killed by the Franco regime. And mm-hmm, so like mm-hmm. it's very interesting that like all of that is kind of a mesh. But like you don't know that unless you know that. Um, I yeah. will say I love her. I love Teresa. Yes. She's like yeah. honestly one of my favorite characters in the movie. I know that I, she's we're not supposed to like her, but I adored her. Yeah. <laughs> well, and also she must have been responsible for you know buying Anna those amazing clothes because oh, I mean those jackets yes, that woman has the I never am like ooing and aahing over women's clothing in movies but oh my god her jackets were just the Mew Mew jacket that uh-huh. was like I think someone found it online and it oh was I over found $2, it I found it online <laughs> okay sorry I, 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 like I guess the one you're that a was, person online too yes. yeah <laughs> I like the one that's denim with the with the amazing sleeves. Oh my God, that one was, it made my head explode. I wanted it so bad. Well, and Ingu fell in love with Penelope Cruz's fluffy fleece jacket that then she had an existential crisis moment of like, wait, did I recently start buying a bunch of fluffy uh, fleece jackets because of this jacket? (laughs) This is true. I also spent half an hour this morning trying to look for something really similar. And I did actually find something on... Uh, Amazon, but it was like forty five dollars, and it was like fake 
Oh, so it'll be great Lease. quality. Exactly. <laughs> and it was like fake leather. It's this like a uh, white fluffy jacket with like brown trim and like the brown trim areas are like very close to the body. And they're very oversized, like they're long. Yeah. I, I loved it. Oh, such a beautiful jacket. But see, I, I just, that reminds me, actually, I do want to get back to something about the class issues, because there's something about, I don't know if it's that Almodovar is extra nuanced and like is actually just like so clever about this, or if... Everybody has no sense of it. Like, I really have no idea. How, I think Daniel and I do... are, like, on the no sense of things N- side ne- never of that. Th- never, never ascribe nuance to Elmodovar. Because, um, you know, the way that uh, Janice explains her family, you know, she's this, she's now a single mother. Her mother, her grandmother was single mothers. She grew up in the Pueblo with her grandmother because her mom was an addict and, you know, died of an OD when, when, when she was only 27. I just knew that in England, there would be a certain kind of actress who would get that role. And it would not be the certain kind of actress who looks like Penelope Cruz, who no matter what you do. Who are you right, picturing in your head? Name names. Um, somebody, yeah, somebody, you know. Is it, do you mean like Kate Blanchett? I'm kidding. That's for later in the pod. <laughs> exactly. But, but uh, somebody, anybody who's in Mike uh, Lee movies, you know, mm. there's, uh, Britain is, is particularly bad because there are posh movies, posh actors and and common actors. So it would always have been a common actor. And actually, as it happens, Penelope Cruz is pretty common in, in that in that way. But he he still has to give her an amazing apartment in a, just a gorgeous... Because well, he, he always has to yeah. have his like Smeg appliances on display. Exactly. So much Apple. I have a pop quiz for you guys. There's a point at which she's... Uh, Penelope Cruz, I believe, is in the kitchen. She's cooking. She has a white shirt on cooking uh the white shirt says we should all be feminists Mm -hmm. how much do you think that t-shirt costs don't look (laughs) it up 105 dollars what about you june i would never pay more than 25 dollars for it. that shirt is very famous and i know that because it costs uh i believe 840 (laughs) dollars Daniel's Amazing. mouth is a game. And so I kept wondering, how is this woman supposed to be so wealthy? I assume that photographers are generally like writers and that <laughs> our industry has been like basically gigified to death. Mm. And so I know that she's like best friends with her editor friend, uh, Rossi De Palma, but I couldn't figure out like if she, her wardrobe was supposed to be so fabulous because she gets all of these things for free as a model-esque woman working in women's magazines or if we were just supposed to be completely divorced from reality. Yeah, I think that like trying to ascribe any sort of like reality to the aesthetics of an Almodovar film is like a useless endeavor. But Ingo, I love that you even came up with an alternative because... (laughs) I think that's probably more than Pedro ever did. I I do want to say that there were like two things about the aesthetics I really loved. Uh, One is that somehow... He just copied the same kitchen from Pain and Glory. (laughs) Also that, but like he was able to incorporate baby elements while in this like extremely fashionable apartment. And I was like, okay, like that's cute to pretend that like having a baby would not make your apartment into like a look like a kindergarten class like not believable but sure um there was like a really like beautiful like canary yellow uh cradle i think that sort of like moved from room to room for example uh the other thing that i really loved was that janice's wardrobe was very like 70s inspired and uh, anna's wardrobe was very 80s inspired you know like she had like Mm -hmm. all of these like really like sporty kind of like tron-esque elements to her wardrobe (laughs) And initially, I was like, is this just like a thing? Like, is this going somewhere? But I guess I sort of liked how it might sort of reflect back on the way that like the country feels stuck in these older decades because of the inability to move forward because they're not. Because the war's still not over. Yes. And so I was like, okay, like, I don't know if I'm like making this up or what, but I like this theory because it takes this like very like unwieldy, I think very sort of like Frankenstein mashy film and sort of. Franco Stein? 
<laughs> shut up, gives it a little bit more coherence. And am I bringing that coherence to the film, or is the film like producing it? I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna put that out there. I do. There were a couple of kind of. It's funny that you mentioned like the realistic elements of the baby because the baby was responsible for as much realism as was present. So, for example, um, <laughs> what was funny and and didn't really make it properly into the subtitles was that Janice would not stop attacking. She hated so much the Irish au pair and and the subtitles I mean, I hated always her said, too. "Oh, yeah, she's mm-hmm. useless." But um, she kept saying. In the subtitles always said Oprah, but Janice always said the Irish girl. Um, <laughs> like she, and and so I kind of love that, that like, oh, my God, I've got to have somebody in my house. I don't want this bitch in my house. She's useless. She's always got the goddamn headphones on. She just keeps whining at me. But I need her. Like, you know, it's kind of ex- low wage exploitation of people that you really don't respect, but that you the only way you can get your fancy life done. I think um, that's another element of this where part yeah. of like the through line of this film is that it's so hard to find good help these days. Yes. <laughs> and I just kept thinking... Makes me think like, about the next movie he's making then. Yeah, I just... I think that one thing that like I think I've been bothered like increasingly with each film is that all of his films are generally about these very wealthy women uh, generally like in urban Spain and sort of like their rich emotional lives and sort of like their emotional suffering and blah 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 right and I think that that's fine but like news came out yesterday that Kate Blanchett was going to star in a movie called A Manual for Cleaning Women and it's going to be about like a bunch of working class women and while Amadovar comes from a for lack of a better word like a working class uh socioeconomic background i don't know like if he has sort of like the wherewithal or sort of like the that common touch anymore Mm -hmm. to make this happen and i will be delighted if he does but i really also hope that like i don't i would be a little skeptical if blanchett was going to be a cleaning woman for instance i don't think she's going to be a cleaning woman i'm convinced that she is going to be one of those like rich women that isn't a typical Almodovar woman that is complaining maybe about like the help. complaining about the help that are all Spanish. And so like she is the white woman complaining about these women who are having to endure her. That's my theory at least. Yeah, I I do I mean I definitely think that this is all connected. Like the it's all about the something that isn't reflected in in what's going on in Spain. You know like Almodovar is of an age where he he can't really grok what's going on. His movies, not to make it too Woody Allen-ish, but Spain isn't white anymore. It isn't. There was there was one black person even just walking through a scene. Uh, I guess he also a, a, a Spanish uh, Olympian uh, was being photographed by by Janice, uh, and she's a woman of color. Like they're just there, but other than those two, literally two people even in the backgrounds it you know and so he he is stuck you know he's stuck yeah and so what can he do he can't make movies about something that he can't even see or maybe i don't i shouldn't say whether or not he can see it but he's not showing it to us um so yeah what the you know the 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 old ladies of you know the mothers the grandmothers you know the, the survivors we see them at the end of the movie. They're the people, you know, because he's a mama's boy and they're the people who he worships. This time is, you know, and also, again, like this time, the aunt or, you know, Janice's aunt, uh, the sole survivor of that generation, is played by Julieta Serrano, who, of course, is, well, now is no longer a survivor. She's since passed away. But she's one of the survivors of his family you know the movie family he's been working with these same actresses and she's uh, played his mother yes yes and and also like weird mother characters you know remember in, in women on the verge women on the verge that crazy character that she played was you know which is you know an ur almodova character she's on she's on her she's staying alive to bear witness but it, it's also that is passing and and now i think he's just screaming hey look at the past look at the past and it's you know that that that's a great urge. That's not a bad thing, but it's a little, it's it's one tiny slice of life. 
Yeah, I think it's worth noting that, like, the only people of color in this movie are basically a group of rapists. Oh, right, Um, I forgot about them, yeah. And then in the last movie, I believe that there was one black character who is a drug dealer who sells heroin to Antonio Banderas' character. Um, This is definitely a thing that I have noticed, and I also don't know that much about multiculturalism in Spain, and so I think I've been a little bit reluctant to comment on it. Speaking of the newer Spain, um, I also sort of felt a little frustrated, I think, by the appearance of the actress who plays Veneno, whose name I do not know anymore. Uh, Ah, yes. Daniela Santiago. Um, It's Veneno's world. We're just living in it. Yeah. It felt a little bit like a catching up. Like, a someone else has, like, anointed her, and then Almodovar sort of was like, oh, like, I also want to be a part of this. That's, like, the vibe Is this one I of got. the first actual trans women in one of his movies? Playing a trans he, woman? He, well, playing a trans woman. He, he, had a lot of, he had a lot of trans women in his movies before anyone else, but then... Right, but I mean, like, playing they, they a trans woman. They were really playing trans yeah. women, yeah. I, I also was like, oh, this is... I mean, I guess they were... I, I don't even know. I was so uncomfortable, honestly, with that scene that I kind of, I blocked it out twice. What made you uncomfortable <laughs> about it? <laughs> Just like what it was there for. What do you feel like it was there for? Yeah. Is it there to show that uh, that Janice is super cool and that like, hey, this is, you know... The place where she works, yes, it's a women's magazine, but it's not transphobic. Like, I just didn't know, but it didn't feel like it was particularly organic to the movie. It was like, it was like they'd, some, you know, Beneno had walked in from another film that was filming across the hallway and then suddenly, like, they used that scene. <laughs> it's like, weren't you in another movie? It just didn't feel like it belonged. It was just odd. And it was the only time, oh no, I guess the other time that she was shooting a human was Arturo at the beginning. The and, opening credits, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which reminded me a lot of the opening of Law of Desire, where yeah. uh, porn is being filmed. Yeah, being a photographer is a very Almodovarino uh, uh, role. I mean, that's classic him, but yeah, this was odd. I think there was something about like the scenes with all of the women's magazines where I think that in previous films, he's been able to use that to like say a particular thing. And this time it just felt like it was there for aesthetics. There was like a montage where all she's doing is taking these close-ups of yes. fashion accessories. Okay, I love that montage. Shut up. It was beautiful, <laughs> but also it just like didn't add anything. Of course to the not. Film. But it gave me like flashes of the opening credits of uh, Women on the Verge. I mean, you just used the word "ad." That was "ad" with two Ds, but it really felt like an "ad" with one D. I mean, it's a very commercial, um, you know. Which she's a commercial photographer. Like, it maybe it's. It's not crazy out of place, but yeah, it's just sort of luxury, 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 um, which. Mm. It's like, okay, I yeah. think maybe like the Veneno thing, if I wanted to like twist it into like a more positive message somehow, it could sort of like undo a little bit of like the gender essentialism of like women are mothers and mothers are women but like we're going to include trans women too i think like you could sort of read that as that but again that feels so ham-fisted then to like bring in daniela santiago for this and so it just like it it, like so much of this felt I, i i think it was something that like I would presume we all love about Almodovar is how he makes the artificial feel natural and sort of almost inevitable. And here everything feels just stiltedly artificial still. Like he doesn't, he's doesn't like pull off that like alchemical trick of like turning it into something else. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's really well put. And I think, I mean, it is, it does, I think, come back to this, you know, the, the heaviness of the big message and the big real life subject, because, again, all these parallels of like, or I don't even think it was parallel, but more pattern that every time um, it was all about honesty, you know, that you could be happy and then you, you would be reminded of something either about the Pueblo or the, the exhumation or, you know, this project to unearth the past and to, you know, confront the past and to be honest 
And then, you know, it just brought down the energy because it's real. And as you say, so much of Almodovar is about embracing artificiality, recognizing it, loving it, um, you know, embracing it and preferring it. And it's like, no, we have to be honest. We have to, you know, just confront reality and like and, and our history. And yeah, we do. I mean, actually, I, agree. I don't disagree with that, but it, it's not all that much fun. Yes, him trying to be more genuine or more earnest somehow feels more artificial. Yes. Um, one th- can we talk about like the uh the relationship between Janice and Anna? Um I th- first of all, like I think it's very interesting that like he brings in Penelope Cruz, like probably at this point like the most recognizable face in his oeuvre since this is her seventh film of him. And then a bunch of, like, unknowns. I don't know why, but, like, I thought that was notable. It's Um, because he spent all his money on her. (laughs) (laughs) But the thing that I wanted to get to is, uh, June, what did you think of, like, the romantic or, like, sexual twist in the movie? Because I feel like it... I, I think, like, it was there to sort of, like, exacerbate, like, uh... Janice's guilt, but also it was like another one of those things where I was like, is this doing anything or is this just no. like a machination? Yeah, no, uh, it's funny because I was shocked when I when I saw it, you know, the first time in a screening room, I was shocked because I just, it's weird. Like, I just never thought that Penelope Cruz would ever do a lesbian scene and a sex scene, um, even though, you know, her career is full of sex scenes. I just, I, 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 I I was shocked. There's no other word for it. And then, you know, when I watched the movie for a second time on a screen, I fast forwarded through it. And it, it, and I don't know exactly why. I mean, I was a little bit like not wanting to be late for our conversation. You know, maybe that's my <laughs> excuse. Uh, but I think, again, it was like a moment of awkwardness, like the one with Benino. And I, I, I get it. Like, I, and I, but I think you're right that there was, that I think it was a sort of a guilt relationship. But like, I'm sure she loves, I'm sure that Janice loves Anna. I'm sure that she has genuine feelings for her. But I didn't believe that she was totally into the sexual relationship. Um, I think she was kind of going along because she felt guilty. I mean, again, like some blur, some some combination. Or like it could be sort of like a way to like, preserve that mother-daughter unit um in any way like what's in any yeah, way that's like, what whatsoever. i was gonna say yeah i think it sort of like reminded me a lot of uh the dirty war in argentina and how the perpetrators and their families would adopt the children of the people that they had jailed or killed um and i was like is this like a thing that like it's going for well, even if it's like sort of like on an unconscious level. Yeah. Um, but also that was just like a limb, like going out on the limb on my part, right? Like I just wanted a little bit more something there to like ram onto. Yeah. I must say though, that did lead to what I thought was the only really great joke in the movie where, again, it's like this odd maternal relationship, even though they are parallel mothers and now they're fucking, but... There's also a maternal thing, especially when Anna moves in with her and she's teaching her basically how to be an adult and how to cook and all those things. It's a very maternal relationship because... Oh my God, that food, that dish, that egg and potato dish looks so good. It's Well, and it is the most delicious, the most Spanish dish, but that's the joke because she's teaching her to make tortilla. And so make tortilla. She's a tortillera. She's making tortilla and tortillera in Spain means dyke. So it's a visual pun. Oh my God. Um, Okay. I love that now. Fantastic movie. (laughs) 10 out of 10. Yeah. But like, so was that all you, was it like, so I, for a minute I wondered like, was this entire movie a chance to make a tortillera joke? (laughs) Honestly, now I love it. Honestly, now it's a brilliant movie. If yeah. that's the entire, yeah. Honestly, though, but like, if that move, if the movie were entirely just for that, we would all be having so much more fun. Yeah, right, right. But like, it wasn't. It was. It was that mixed with like, oh, I have to get serious now because the people have to know. The kids need to remember the kids that are all watching my movies. I have to tell the truth. Yeah, exactly. I will say my favorite line of the 
uh, movie was where Anna and Janice are listening to Janice Joplin sing Summertime, and Anna goes, who's Janice Joplin? <laughs> Oh, that, so <laughs> it was like the one time where I was like, okay, I'm a little knows how to write for the teenagers. <laughs> yes, that was And also fun. for the Xers or whatever. I never know the names of generations, but like, yeah, that, that's one that's going to please all the, uh, all the gens. Exactly. Uh, speaking of their relationship, though, I wanted to talk about the scene where, where Janice reveals that the baby is not hers and then Anna just takes the baby and leaves. And I'm sorry, but if I were a mother who lost a baby because some other woman, it died in someone other, some other woman's care, I would not then allow that woman to take the other baby with her, regardless of why it died. Right. No, sorry. Yeah, there was, I know, that was... Th- and I, I mean, I had a version of that feeling. I and mean, then it was a feeling. It was a, like I had an emotional response to that. Like, you're just going to let her go. Um, but and, and then just that whole sense of like, well, she's yours. But like, OK, let's not bring it. Like, I don't want to make this like a libertar- libertarian uh, treatise. But like, you don't really just make those kind of decisions between. You have to kind of <laughs> allow the state to know, like, where is this baby living? I mean, maybe, you know, Janice's mom was a hippie. So. You know, maybe the whole thing of like, well, Janice went to live with her grandma in the Pueblo. Like, I don't even know what the parallel was there, but I had the same thing. I also, it also kind of made me feel worse about um, uh, Janice. I always find it so hard to remember her name. Um, Doesn't suit her. Uh, Because Anna had to explain to her twice what SIDS was or sudden death. And like, yeah, but why, like, did you read anything? Like you keep you keep yelling at the Irish girl for letting uh, <laughs> the baby d- lie on her back, but do you remember why you're doing that? Right? It's for the thing that you know. Like it, it was just a weird like what what information are you missing here? And do you know anything about having a baby and keeping a baby alive? See, I kind of read that as like interrogation of like yeah. Are, is that really what happened? Mm-hmm, and trying mm-hmm. to like ask it gently, but like really get to the bottom of like, okay, but did your mom really kill her? Because like she seemed like she might have. Like, <laughs> I didn't that's... think that, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think that some of the baby stuff just was like mishandled, and it's partially because like Pedro doesn't have kids, and so he might not know how like this all actually emotionally would play out. Not that I do either or anything, right. but like it just felt like there was. There was some like foregone conclusion Penelope had already come to in her head before she was going to relinquish this baby, as opposed to like what we've seen all beforehand, where she's like hanging on to that baby tooth and nail. Like, Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. just, it really didn't fit with the way the character had developed till then. I think that that's true. I think I had a slightly different reading where. I think that Janice knew somewhere in her mind that she had to give up the baby eventually, that like the truth was going to come out. And so I think she just sort of like was either paralyzed by her guilt or like was resigned to the inevitability of it. I do want to say that um, I made a joke to Daniel uh, while we were rewatching this for the pod where I was like, oh, finally, there's like an Almodovar movie and there is a rape scene or like an implied rape, but like there's no sympathy for the rapist. Um, but then I was, <laughs> I mean, come on. like Which we- actually, as we've watched all of these movies, both Campion and Almodovar, turns out a lot of people have sympathy for rapists. <sighs> I mean, it's a good like narrative like, yeah, technique. Certainly. Um, but I think that... The reason why, like, the two halves of the movie just, like, really did not work for me is that Amadova apparently, from the very start, wanted wanted to have a story about two women who give birth on the same day, and also one of those women wanted to have the graves of, like, her great-grandfather exhumed. Like, that Mm -hmm. was, like, already in place. Mm -hmm. And I think the formulation for that that doesn't work for me is that we have to then sort of like focus on the counterpart of like the perpetrator because Janice in the scenario of like the person 
like perpetrating like the violence or like the injustice or like the incorrect situation is then put into the position of like the person who like holds secrets and is the wrongdoer essentially right so like she's not the person who did the wrong thing but she's the person who sort of like guards the secret and like wants to perpetuate and sort of like wants to like yeah. deny a reunion between a family yeah and i would just thought like where is this going like i understand that like janice feels guilt but it doesn't go anywhere beyond that and yeah. i and then like in no other situation with the mass graves are we asked to think about the people who cr- perpetrated the mass graves and so i just yeah. kept thinking like what is the point of connecting these two things if like the pieces don't actually really fit yeah i mean the pieces fit to a certain extent in, in this obsession which became you know borderline racist of do you how do you look you know do you carry the appearance you know do you carry the physical characteristics of your parents that had to be there for the other storyline so that we could follow like well he had a glass eye he always wore his like you know we have to be able to identify our ancestors bones Mm -hmm. you know which is actually kind of a weird urge but it is we have dna now we don't need the glass eye exactly um so like it had to be there for parallel but i agree that it it, that wasn't the appropriate parallel. Who's the phalangist in this story? You know, it's some inept, overworked, you know, distracted hospital worker who made this original, you know. The hospital it, worker isn't even following orders. Like, the analogy for yeah. me just, like, doesn't work. And so no. I just kept thinking, I don't know why you put these two pieces together. And I think when I was watching the film for the first time, I was so underwhelmed by the lifetimey half of the movie, um, of like the parallel mother aspect, that I was like, oh, thank God it's sort of like about something when they finally got back to the Pueblo. But I think upon rewatch, I disliked the movie even more because the thing that I saw as sort of like the... uh part that sort of like rescued the movie from irrelevance or from like insubstantiality like it turned out like it didn't even like fit and so yeah i was like this is not a good movie yeah they were like the two halves were so wildly disconnected that he did not do the work that he needed to do to make us care about the mass graves Mm -hmm. and to make it fit with the like thematic nature of the other half of his film i think so many of his other films he's so much more successful at like joining these themes together from such disparate parts of a like messy story this really felt too tight to be an almodovar movie and that like yeah there's an airlessness yeah yeah and the beginning and the end felt like tacked on from a different movie because like we kind of lose that plot we needed to go to the pueblo much earlier in the film to meet these women like in volver Mm -hmm. volver we start there and we like meet these women like and so then we have a relationship with the women of the pueblo in a way that we don't have that with these women until we go see them at the end of the film and I think in Volver, like, the women have so much personality, and mm-hmm. even if it's not sort of, like, a necessarily, like, wholly positive one, there is sort of, like, the idea that, like, these women who are sort of s- sitting around, like, waiting to die are still, like, taking care of one another. There is, like, something to the women. Yeah. And yeah. I think here, uh, when we do meet the women, like, yeah, they're, like, nodding off, and they're still cooking for you, and, like, it's all very sweet, but, like, there's no depth to them. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I can't argue. I I know it's like recognizing what he was going for doesn't excuse the complete failure of it to work. Like, <laughs> I know that. So I think even more just than like, well, there were these deaths, these these deaths that shouldn't have happened. We want to get to the bottom of it. We want to shine light. And then the word or a phrase for giving birth in Spanish is darluth, give light. Like, I really think, it, like, he's dealing with death and birth and, and covering and uncovering and bring light and all of that. And it's like, I get what you were going for. Did not work. 
now that like as we're talking about it, it, it makes me think that like especially as we just like we're laughing about I hate to say it sympathy for the rapist, but like it fe- I think the part of the problem that we're running into is that Pedro has no sympathy for the other side, and not that he necessarily should have side have like sympathy for the dictatorship that wrought so much terror on the country, but because it is so one-sided and it's like, I already know what the right side is here, Mm -hmm. that there is no emotional like complexity. So we can't have any sort of like mixed reaction to it that is so useful in his films. Yeah. 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 And if you're going to have Beneno, you got to have her say something rude. You got to have like, you know, he's, I actually think, (laughs) I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think maybe he's gotten afraid of cancel culture. Like he's being too careful and it that's not who he is. That's not why we like him. I do think that the, you're right. I think that there is a part of him that I, I, I think like a lot of like analyses that I've read of his work um, sort of like talk about him as kind of this like libertarian figure, right? Like not a classic liberal, but sort of like everyone should have freedom all of the time. Mm. And now there is sort of this like much more like partisan, like much more reacting to the far right, like much more, oh no, like I need to like get into like my particular cubby hole um, instinct. And I think as a person that makes total sense. And as an artist, it's just not as interesting. Yeah. Yeah. When we first like when the plot for this movie first kind of came out, just like the like few sentence plot about like, the gravesite and the mothers and everything. I really honestly, like in my own head of like, how do I think this Almodovar movie is going to play out? Thought that like there was going to be some sort of twist or revelation in the grave that like kind of turned everything and made us think freshly about something else that happened. Yeah. But that never came. Yeah. Yeah. And why did... I, I think maybe now he's gotten a little too attached to having a big like... Da da at the end, and so he put uh, all the bodies, the people, like live people's bodies, in the exact same shapes as the bones. Oh, but- I thought that was a really effective final shot. But let's talk about this because Daniel also didn't like it. I felt like it was just Almodovar saying, "Do you get it? Do you get it?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it just like, again. He's. I. I just think he's gotten addictive to a big revel, revelation, revelatory final, mo, you know, tableau. And as a tableau, it was pretty effective. But like, what? Yeah, I did. It didn't have any meaning for me. Yeah. Like I can think of some of his best tableaus, like at the end of Bad Education or at the end of like Pain uh, and Glory, Pr- Plain think, and Glory, Pain yeah, and Glory, yeah. 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 yeah, or even like honestly, the like final graph of text at the end of All About My Mother, much more affecting than I think the even the final graph of text in this one. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the Eduardo Galeano. Like, yeah. we must remember history won't history. shut its mouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was effective just because when you look at bones, they're just bones. Um, my apologies to the show <laughs> Bones. Um, and I thought like seeing all of these people like as they would have looked you know like when they were murdered i thought that was effective um i think it's one of those things where you get a number like a hundred thousand or you get a number like two hundred thousand dead and it's just so impossible to like think Mm -hmm. about to grapple with your mind and so when you Mm -hmm. look at these people who you saw as alive just five seconds ago and then you see them as corpses i was like okay like i understand that like this is basically exactly what happened to all of these people did i need that no like did i did it make me feel something yes Mm -hmm. um according to a new york times feature that i read about this film apparently the final shot was originally supposed to be like a close-up of cecilia the baby and then the baby wouldn't cooperate and so they ended up with this like excavation scene and i was like i much prefer the dead people to the baby i don't need to look at that dumb baby yeah. again yeah and i actually read something in the press notes that just it freaked me out and it just kind of made me think pedro are you human because it he, so you know he famously writes his own press notes they're often very like you know 
stream of consciousness. And he told a story about how, you know, the baby, she grew up and she was a terrible, you know, was in the terrible twos at the time that they were making, filming those final scenes and just wasn't cooperating. And and he gives a, 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 tells a story about how one of the assistant director um, who had been pregnant during the filming and had a miscarriage, which first of all, Ugh. Why are you telling this story? It's not your story. Okay, but okay, maybe maybe she gave him permission. Okay. And she got into the grave, which, okay, maybe to them was just a hole, you know, whatever, and sang sto- sang songs that probably, I think he said probably, she was going to sing to her baby and they calmed the two-year-old. And I'm just like, this story is traumatizing me and it's making me wonder, like, what planet? What planet is this story? You know, and, and and sure, I'm sure that that was like an amazing moment, but maybe one that you kind of keep. To but where's the Almodovar movie about that? Exactly, exactly. Like it is more interesting, truly. But yeah, it oh, it, that's it, it just like freaked me out. I think it's going to give me nightmares, and I don't even really know why, because it's not like a, it's not gross. It's just like wow, you know. Thanks for sharing that, because there's. That's like both death and, you know, the changing of the seasons right there. It reminds me of that, like, uh, Jennifer Aniston line about Brad Pitt, about how there's just like a sensitivity chip missing there somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe that's helped to make these crazy movies with like, <laughs> weird shit happening that you're like, why did you leave that in? But I'm glad you did because it was kind of fun to see it and like experience those feelings. But also that's how I feel mm. watching the entirety of Kika. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How else can you explain it? Mm-hmm. Um, there was like one moment of not like quite whimsy, like it's quite like horrible, but like that I could see Almodova turning into a very like whimsical moment that I wish he had like shown instead of told, which is very early or early on. Janice tells the forensic anthropologist that the reason why the people in the town know uh, like where the grave site is is because one of the men was supposed to be killed but he was merely injured and then basically like crawled out of the mass grave and told everyone where it was um i don't think that like you know like i just thought it could have been sort of like a nice like uh like sort of like more whimsical chapter that you might or like a more whimsical interlude the way that like you might have like with talk to her and like the silent film i was gonna say it just oh like my God, could Emil. have been like a fun <laughs> moment that like I think like he would have I, I I think like of all the filmmakers out there in the world maybe like him and Jane Campion they could like figure out like a way to take like the emotional gravity of that scene while injecting it with a sort of like I'm windy. not dead yet. <laughs> But then, in fact, I, I agree. And but instead, they stepped on it by I think it's Anna who says, "Well, why did he go back? Why didn't he, you know, take off?" And she said, "Well, you know, he didn't want to leave his wife and daughter." Which, oh, fair enough. So, but then she says, "But I think also it was about pride and dignity." You're like, <sighs> "Well, that killed the mood, didn't it?" I <laughs> yeah, I mean, Almodovar also just sucks when he's writing men. Let's be real. True. Unless he's writing himself. And yet this movie only has, like, one man and it still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> he's a really bad man. One man and no uh, Augustine that I could find. I know. I know. The second I kept rewinding, like, every time, like, get in a cab or, like, the people at the table. I looked at the guy, the bald guy who was, um, you know, digging up the graves. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, did Augustine grow like an enormous beard but it wasn't him yeah i i'm worried but yeah, i also I know he's okay. that he's still very much i know he's still very much involved so but yeah i'm really i'm hoping that somebody will spot him but i sure didn't yeah i might have to do one more one more pass to find him just looking at the really the background players exactly the only guy that i actually did see which really is for me the where's waldo of this entire like filmography is the guy who played the phone repairman in women on the verge who pops up in like all of these movies with like no lines or one line and i love it but also i'm just like who is this person to you i had never (laughs) i was completely unaware of that person until you pointed it out and in this movie he's the guy who's getting his phone before she yeah right before yeah Yeah. and it's 
because I was like, it was. I must admit that I didn't. I didn't notice the first time. It was when I was doing my Agustin scan that I noticed mm-hmm. him. But yeah, he's a loyal guy. What can we say? He's super yeah. loyal. I love that. I mean, which again is kind of on brand with the whole like we must tell the truth about the civil war. Um, but yeah, yeah. More jokes, please. We should also tell the truth about how there are no phones with cords anymore, and every time. Janice had like her phone, her landline. Janice is a woman in her forties. Come on, she doesn't have a fucking landline with like a cord. I just like, what are you doing? He loves his anachronisms. I really think the phone with the cord was the, um, the the monitor downstairs. What do you call those things? The no, I know, beep, beep. like the apartment. But, yeah, I know. Yeah, thing. no, but yeah. no. I mean, again, though, I those kind of things. Um, I find them comforting. Like any every time, oh, she's a photographer. Oh, she's an actress. Oh, she's doing a monologue. Oh, there's a toilet. Like he's the only <laughs> movie maker who's ever shown a toilet in a movie. Oh, there's a there's a lot of phone shit. Like it reassures me that it is still Pedro because it didn't feel very Almodovareño other than these luxury brand and you know just the things that I don't care about that I recognize but they don't touch me. I wanted. I wanted the laughs and the, you know, it just wasn't the right bit. It wasn't the bit that I liked, but at least it made me, reassured me that this really was an Almodovar movie. I mean, I don't, yeah. if the apartments don't convince you, June, I don't know what will. The apartments and like Penelope Cruz's heavy ass eyeliner, which for a woman. And amazing hair. Who, oh or my like God. a woman who like supposedly get, does not get any sleep. She certainly has like nailed her apparently like quite waterproof eyeliner. Except, you know, I mean, and she, but also that she is willing to have scenes where she's very clearly not wearing makeup and where she, you know, of course, she's Penelope Cruz. She looks amazing. She'd just like fallen down a well. She would look amazing. But like, there, it, she is astonishing. She She is such an amazing actress in Spanish. And she does look like she can c- convince you. Oh, no, she could have another baby soon. Yeah, no problem. Really? Really? <laughs> what made you... Yeah, I clocked that too. Um, what made you so uncomfortable about Penelope Cruz's lesbian love scenes? Well, like, what did you just like not find convincing about it? I think it was that feeling of this is something that's happening for guilt. Mm. Um, and, or, you know, that, again, like, there's love. And I love, like, at the end, like, the one great thing about this scene down in the Pueblo, and actually I thought the procession was pretty effective. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, same. And maybe, and maybe if we'd left it there, <laughs> would have been I think if it good. ended, at, like, on the procession yeah. or something, that could have been more affecting, but... Exactly, yeah. And, it, yeah. Um, and I loved the way when they got to the Pueblo that, like, you know, it's a family that, that Anna and uh, Janice Cecilia and, and Arturo Janice. and Cecilia and, and the, the kid to come... Like it's a very very and warm, Rossi's character, loving, yeah, and Rossi and you know poor Rossi and this kind of uh, like kind of uh, what's the word chosen family, yeah, yeah, that is fantastic, um, love that, and and so it's not like all negative. It's just like I didn't for an actress so who can be so convincing. I feel that she was trying to convey, and thus Pedro told her to convey that you're doing this um, because, you know, because of other feelings. So they're not about lust or, you know, it, 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 yeah, she loves her, but she, it's, it's like it, there, there are sort of negative reasons for getting sexual. But, you know, it seemed like she had a good time. It just, <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, I'm not, I must, to be clear, my complaints are, are not that, I'm not making them all that strongly. Uh, but it just, it it's, you know, there's not a lot of, there aren't a lot of, convincing lesbians you know the, we've seen women who are in love uh but we haven't i don't know that there have been all that many convincing lesbian pairings uh in his films a lot of women there are women who have sex together there are women who are in love he's not really good at putting those things together i do want to say i know that like janice is supposed to be this like very restrained character i did not think that she cared that much about the fact that like her own baby died Mm. I was uh-huh. like, where's your grief? Like, all you care yeah. about is, like, Cecilia. And you seem very, very, like, 
uninvolved with like Anita's death, even though that was like her actual baby. Yeah, no, and uh, she cares much more about the grave, which again, like reasonable, but your baby. But like Alma Dovar, she is looking to the past, not to the future. Yeah, even though we see her baby's grave. Oh we, yeah, like we get taken to Anita's grave. Like, and it yet still isn't even as affecting as the yeah. grave that her grandfather, great grandfather was buried mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pedro doesn't get kids. Yeah. No. I mean, I don't either, but. No, I mean. I, I think we all share that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Wrong group for that conversation. 100%. Uh, thanks so much for coming back, uh, June. Anytime. So much fun. Can't, this was can't think of anything I'd rather have done today. Well, that's it for this episode of All About Almodovar. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode and every episode in our archive. Um, We'll be back, of course, when Manual for a Cleaning Woman comes out eventually. We'll see how that is. And we'll be back if there are any other Almodovar developments in the meantime. And of course, you can always reach us at allaboutfilmpod at gmail.com.